The Valheim Mistlands update is insane. I haven't had this much fun playing games in years and I'm not gonna lie, I spent over 80 hours exploring the new content and there is so much to talk about. In this series, I'll share everything you need to know about the Mistlands update, from preparing for the new biome to advanced guides for the late game. In the first one, I'll show you how to prepare for the Mistlands biome, get rid of the mist, give you survival tips to make exploration a lot easier, which items to prioritize and set down, so let's get right to it. By the way, nothing beats naked men jumping through portals hand in hand to recover their gear, so if you can't wait to start exploring the Mistlands together, make sure to check out my G Portal ref link in the description for a nice server discount. Alright, so before you even dare entering the Mistlands, you want to prepare as a thick layer of mist will cover the entire biome. It will make it super difficult to both explore, survive and even see things in the first place. With the update, we also get a new drop from the fifth boss, Yagluth. So make sure you first take him down as if you've taken him down, he will drop a torn spirit, which you can in return use to construct a wisp fountain. To place the Wisp Fountain, you're gonna need a stone cutter, 10 stone, and also one torn spirit. And you can find it exactly right here in the crafting tab. And when you place it during the night, it will say the wisps are coming. It is very important to know that the Wisp Fountain will not work during the day. Also, if you place a roof over it, it will not provide darkness. Just wait for the night to pop up, and then after some time, you will see wisps gathering around the fountain. And if you click on them, you can harvest them. If you combine one wisp and one silver at the workbench, you can craft a wisp light, which will help you to get rid of the mist. So right now we're standing on the border of a black forest and mistlands biome. If we turn around, you can see that, well, there is not much to see. So all you need to do is right click your wisp light to equip it, and then you will release the bound wisp. The problem with the thick mist though, is that it only has a small radius, so it won't be easy to reveal everything. To make exploration a little bit easier, I definitely recommend you to get the Eichthyr buff, as it will make climbing so much easier, and once you reach the mountain tops, you can actually check out your surroundings, enemies, debris, and especially points of interest a lot faster. Look at that, we just found an Yggdrasil root, some treasure, and also an excavation camp of the dwarves. Before you reap the rewards or decide to fight enemies though, I always recommend you to have a plan B. A backup plan for if things go sideways. Not only want to escape, but also want to get back, as for example if you die and are on the other side of the world, it's gonna be a problem to get your corpse back. I'm sure many of you already know this, but I just want to stress things out as the Mistlands can be pretty brutal and trust me, it's not fun to corpse run for a couple hours, but what's really essential is that you always bring portal mats. Not only for corpse runs, but if you find something valuable, you can always bring it back to your base quickly, repair your weapons and armor, craft some new ammo to prepare for the dungeon and possibly link a forward base to your main. So, now that you have your way in and your way out, it's time to talk about the friends and foes which you can come across. First off, if you hear War of the World dubstep sounds coming from the distance, you definitely want to be careful, as a gyal might be stalking the area. It won't be easy to see them coming, but you will definitely hear them coming. These flying bastards hit like a truck with acid bombs and also summon in giant ticks. So there are basically two things you want to focus on. First, dodge the acid, and second, take out the ticks as quick as possible. They are actually pretty easy to dodge. If you just run or even walk sideways, they will most likely miss you, but if they do manage to jump on you, they will drain blood over time, basically deal a lot of damage over time. While they're draining your blood, you can use your block to prevent the damage, and also swing with your sword to attempt to take him down. One thing that is very important is to always have enough stamina when ticks are close, because strafing, rolling and dodging in the first place will be your best way to deal with the ticks. Once you've covered some distance, just take out your melee weapon and take them down with one or two swings. A ranged weapon will also do the job, but they can sometimes be pretty jumpy or difficult to hit. Anyways, back to the flying bastard. After you've dealt with the ticks, you basically want to aim on his belly. It's filled with lights and not easy to miss. Basically, the weak spot of the gyal, if you shoot it with your ranged weapon, it will deal a lot of damage. I absolutely loved hunting gyals after I unlocked the Arabalest, Valheim's new crossbow, which can take him down fairly quickly. And the good thing is, it won't take much time before you unlock this bad boy, so you're in for a treat. 
Anyways, next up we have the Seekers, huge insects which you will come across very frequently as these populate the majority of the mistlands and can be pretty tricky to shake off as well. As the smaller Seekers, well, not so small, have wings and will attempt to chase you down anywhere possible. If you climb hills and even attempt to break the pathing with these mobs, they will still be able to reach you. It's just super difficult to escape from them, so what you want to do is just confront them and get rid of them. Once you've figured out their attack patterns, they are pretty easy to take down, so you basically want to focus on the sounds they make. With a buckler and a decent weapon, it will only take you 4 or 5 hits before they are dead, while the Seeker soldiers are another story. These bad boys are pretty tanky and will take a while before you can take them down. I usually just leave them be as it's not that much worth the risk to fight them. You will probably lose some HP while you're at it and possibly also a lot of ammo. But if you are brave enough to take them down, just aim for their asses. Their attack animation is pretty slow, then you can just roll around, stab them in the back and that will do the job. If you're struggling with these mobs though, I always recommend you to find some friends in the Mistlands. The dwarves or dverger that inhabit these lands, if you are friendly, they will be friendly as well. And the cool thing is, if you lure some bad guys to their bases, they will become pretty angry and will defend it with their lives. I mean, what would you do when something attacks your base, right? The rogues basically have crossbows that will obviously hit you like a truck, while the mages, in my opinion, are so much more scary. As the frost mages can slow you down, the fire mages blow you to pieces, just like the gulls. But then we also have healers. Just be friends with them and let them take care of all the insects. And then if you think you are ready to take them down, you should go for it. In general, it is not a very bad thing to eventually deal with the dwarves, as these little fellas contain an item which you're gonna very much need for endgame crafting. So right now I think it's time to settle down, search for a nice place as forward base to start farming for the endgame mats which you're gonna need for the best weapons and armor in the game. You want to prioritize Yggdrasil roots and also abandoned dwarf bases. You can take out the dwarves yourselves or let the insects do it, it doesn't matter. But these are a fantastic forward base to place a portal, get some smelters up and running, rest a little bit and get ready for the next day to start farming for the most important items in the game. These little bases are made of black metal, which is pretty thick, not easy to penetrate and at the same time also comes with a lot of riches. Not only will you find soft tissue in boxes here, but also dvergir extractors. Each dwarven camp with dwarves usually comes with one, so you want to save up these bad boys to get ready for sap extraction, which we're going to talk about in another video, but also black cores. The carapaz and skill height, of course, can be found off the rabbits and insects, which you found right here, but black cores are something else. I personally had a lot of trouble locating these bad boys as the dungeons I found didn't generate with any of them inside until like two days ago. So I can finally start making my guides. No, but seriously, for these you want to venture into infested mines. Infested mines are the new dungeons. Very similar to the crypts of the black forest, you will find black cores right here instead of circling cores. I gotta be honest, this brought back so many great memories from other games I played in the past like WoW because the dungeon vibe right here is real especially if you played with friends and have a lot of one or two star enemies inside this is gonna be a true challenge anyways right here you want to focus on those purple shiny things these sweet babies are the gateway to your endgame loot anyways that is for another video so there you have it everything you need to know to get ready for the mistlands which enemies to avoid friends and foes which are gonna have to deal with, where to settle down and what your priorities are to get ready for the endgame. Ladies and gentlemen, a big thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button as it helps out the channel. Definitely let me know in the comments what you think about the Mistlands update. I absolutely love it. I'm really looking forward to making more videos for it. If you have more questions or suggestions about the game, let me know in the comments as well. Right now though, it is 4am out. I want to wish you an awesome day. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.